It's the Christmas special of Between the Sheets. And it's my pleasure to welcome my panel this time. Yes, it's the host of what can only be described of Clashes of the Week. It's Mr. Phil Dave. We have a broadcast legend and, oh, We've got a broadcaster and author, Russ Kane, and we've got broadcaster and columnist Dawn Neeson. Welcome to you all. With just 10 yeah, days to sorry. go until Christmas, yeah. many people are now under self-imposed lockdown. If you are invited to a party, will you go or will you... Will you... <gasps> when, when is it? I'm coming. I'm there. Oh, dear. I might have forgotten to tell you. <laughs> might have had no, it already. No, I am cancelling absolutely nothing. I am going to party like it's... Christmas. Like it's nice. So you're okay, it's so you're parting, you're doing everything. I'm Russ, doing are you everything. Going everything. I'm being no, I'm being cautious. Oh. I'm going to some don't look at me like that. No. All right, I'll get to But you've got party. the own. I mean, you're put it right. this way, no. we get some advice wah, here. Wah, wah, wah. The, the shutdown shuffle, what yep. to say and For what to say. By the way, Russ is wearing antlers just in case you can't see him. Uh, a dinner and party, a it <laughs> depends <laughs> who's cooking. Yeah. Oh, you are. No, I can't come due to Omicron. You can't say that, according to this. Oh, right, this is the etiquette guide. So this is the oh, etiquette guide. Right. But do say, yeah. yeah, I'll be there, but do you mind if everybody shares a lateral flow result on the WhatsApp first? I mean, is it fair enough to ask everybody oh, to share a WhatsApp? I, I, anyone, anyone that does that, I'm not going to their party. Really? No, sorry, they're oh. not my friends. No, no. hang on a no. second. What? No. No. Lateral flow no. test? No, 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 no. A, a lateral flow test? It's, it's fine, Christmas. it's not asking about your health status. No, it might be Christmas, but I hate to tell you the virus doesn't care it's Christmas. It's perfectly reasonable. Or to say, can you just test before going? No, you... no, I'm not doing it. I'm Why not, not? going to. I'm not going to question anybody on their medical history, whether that's it's not just medical, medical history, history. That's medical current, whether it's COVID or anything else. No, I don't want to know. I'm having a party. Come to my party. I have mistletoe. Hang on, just a couple oh, of oh, second. Would you oh, say oh, then oh, in that oh, case? No, I don't want to do when, that. All right, let's, let's rewind a sec. Let's no, rewind to normal time. times. Let's forget, pretend COVID doesn't exist. Okay? Yay. Did you not have? an issue with anyone who would rock up to anything you were hosting, whether it be a party, a dinner, whatever it was, and they had a cold. Did that not really annoy you? No. Yes. That really no. annoys me. Yeah. If somebody turns up and they're sniffling, oh, I've just started yeah, to I, get I, a cold, I, I, I stay worry. at I, home. You bunch of wusses. No, it's yes. no. That's right up there. That's right up there. When you've made dinner oh, and oh, I, I, bet you, yeah. I bet you three hand them sanitizer as they walk in the door as well, don't you? No, they have to wear a hazmat He's got it in his pocket. He's got it in his pocket. And frankly, I'm surprised he's taking his gloves off. Dawn. No, I Listen, think that's right up the there, right? I'm filthy. <laughs> Sorry. We know. Gracious. <laughs> Yay! But then, OK, so we take that story. Oh, sorry. But then doesn't that then creep what? into why we're in the mess that we're currently in? So back to the front pages, The Guardian, dare I say. Oh, the cheer-up page. UK Omicron <laughs> infections could reach one a million, one million a day. Oh. Now, oh, could, here's the thing, though. Could. Ah, but this could. is the issue. This is exactly... I've got that exact story right in front of me, and I have okay. a major issue with the word... Could. Could. Because Could. it doesn't mean... It's doing a lot of heavy lifting in that, isn't it? It doesn't mean that's what's going to happen. No. I wouldn't mind if scientists turned around and said, the rates that infections are carrying on, we will get to one million infections per day. Absolutely, I'd be all for it. I'd say, do you know what? That may, that only may, run the risk of overwhelming the NHS. And as a result, I can understand right. why we might have to have... Some... When you say it could get could. to yeah. one million, you, that's you know, terrible. But then you do expect them to go to the worst-case scenario. As well, with anything, absolutely. you have worst-case, best-case, most likely. Well, Sage... I mean, so you can go and get stuffed. Yeah, but they haven't necessarily got it right because what they've done is they've said, yes. here's what could happen. Yeah. And then they've said, these are the measures that we need to bring in. And then the you measures know. that we bring in mean that it's not as bad <laughs> as it might be. <laughs> no, no, no. Come on. Sorry. That's, you know full well it's not what, what they did. They, they give worst case scenario without knowing for sure that's what's going yeah, to but happen. Yeah, nobody can predict in the future. Isn't this exactly part of the problem? Exactly my point. Yes, but that's here's exactly the problem, my though. Point. Yes, but hang on a second. But the, the, the reason that they're they now concerned, because initially I looked at this and I... And I, like you, looked at it and went, could, I'm not... <laughs> so he I like, like you. you. That's nice. Oh, He's got that on camera. Really? The, that's it. Oh. The spirit of Christmas is yeah. something I know. on James and I, and I And I agree. And, and then as soon as it says could, then I've got a problem. It, it, yeah, because, because it's, it's over-egging it. The, but here's the other problem. Over-egg-nogging it. Here's, oh. the other, here's the other problem, though. When you start to look at the data, you begin to realise that we now have specific problems in big cities. A third of people it's in London cities, have not it? had any jabs. Yes. Does that concern you? Have I've, you been double jabbed? I've been double jabbed and boosted. I've had have all you been jabs. double jabbed? Yeah. Double jabbed and boosted. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been double jabbed? I've had more pricks hey. than the second hand dartboard. And boosted. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> I, yeah, I got, okay. the, I got so, the crackers. So arguably, yeah. then, then we shouldn't be concerned because if we were to get it, because you can still get it if, even yeah. if you're yes. jabbed, we shouldn't be concerned because the risk of hospitalisation is very low. It's very low. But this is, this is what I think oh, get they the might point, be getting James. concerned about. 67% of uh, London have only had their first only jab. 61% of Londoners have had two jabs, which means that, that over a third of people in the capital city who have not had a jab at all. No. That's a concern. Well, that's because the messaging has been completely wrong from the government all along. But that's arguably, constant... isn't, it, isn't it part of a problem, though, that people like you are being a little bit irresponsible by saying... I, go and get your jab. I am the most responsible person ever. I've always said, go and get your jab. I've had my jabs. I'm very proud to have had all my jabs. I mm. do all the Okay, the so what would you say to, to these do. people who have not done it? I think I, I'd say you're selfish. Well, I, I know. Genuinely, I, I'd say you're selfish. No, I'd because, say, what is the no, matter with no, you? If there is no legitimate medical reason why they can't get the jab, they're that's selfish. that's exactly the wrong way to do it. And that's exactly Ooh. what the government have done. From day one, they have terrorised. Okay, they have, so flip it round. Oh, so so what would you say instead? What would you say instead? Well, if you stop interrupting me, I'll get one out, wouldn't I? A word, I'd rather is. not. <laughs> no, but this is the government's problem in the first place. They have their their methodology. What would you get them to say? Instead, you've, be, you've edited they, newspapers. But, you write columns. What would you get them to say and say? Kill a mutant virus uh, on so the way. Is it okay? Are we all done with opinion? Is it okay then? Yes. yes. I'm sick of it. You okay. Say sick you, of it. Sick yeah. of it. Okay. Sick so of it. in that case, you say you don't want to sort of terror people into getting no. it, but. Is it okay for those who d blatantly don't follow the rules to go around terrorising those who genuinely are concerned? No, I don't want anyone terrorised by anything. It's Christmas. I want people to be happy. No, it is completely <laughs> wrong to cause anxiety and panic. We all should but be in together. But that's what those who aren't taking the jab, that's what those who don't bother with face masks and don't bother with social distancing when people are clearly trying to look after themselves, wear gloves, wear masks. It's a bit obvious who's taking this seriously and who's not. And yet still, people barge past uh, you, they brush up against the you, they're terrorising people. Bullying and terrorising people has had the opposite effect of encouraging okay. people to be together and fight this together. Right, OK, so number 10 wants to avoid worse measures. Would you accept another lockdown, though? No, absolutely not. I'm not okay, doing what, it. What I will never, say? ever do it. No, but what do they it. say? We are locking down. Then I'll you, tell you what, okay. You can if find restaurants, me, you if can restaurants put me and bars, prison, whatever. If restaurants and bars close, then what are you going to do? If it's good enough for number ten, I'm there. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Right. If it's the law, then I'd have to abide by the law. Do I want another lockdown? No. Do I think that the national psyche of the country could take another lockdown? No. no. Mental I health think, issues? No, mental health... Men, the, the mental health side effects, which is something film I talk about a lot, it's just... It's, it's like, right on a knife edge, and we can't keep pushing this. OK, so let's we just can't. talk a little bit about the mental health side of it. So yep. we, we hear the headline, and then we don't necessarily delve into it. What's it done to people? What's it done to people you know? I'll tell you exactly what it's done. I'm glad you asked. Number one, it's made mm. it's given everybody this constant low level anxiety. Yep. This low level yep. anxiety, like you're waiting for the other shoe to drop. You're waiting for the, the International Space Station to fall on your head. Everybody is is catastrophizing over everything. Exactly. Little things in life that we would just bounce through, yep. suddenly it's like yep. a very yep. big deal. Yeah. So it's even like, for example, you're invited to a big family gathering yeah. and people are very concerned about it. You spent a lot of money on going on holiday, uh, if you're fortunate enough to be able to do so, and then you've got to take the test, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, yeah, yeah, yeah. and what if one of you gets cancelled, then what on earth do you do? Can you claim that? All these levels of anxiety. So I think are you saying that's preying on people? Then? No, no, but it's gone slightly it's, worse. It's, it's, also, it's, it's, worse it's given that. people... Much bigger than that. It's turned people into hermits. So people yes. who I, yes, would ordinarily totally. leave the house without thinking a thing of it are now a totally housebound. They don't want to go anywhere, not because... Because they're frightened. They, yes, yeah, I think yeah, they're scared. Yeah, they're definitely allowed to being frightened. Agoraphobia. They've, they've become yeah. agoraphobic. Yeah. And do you think that's because when, when we come back to this, when you see the headline, um, uh, the further to the left you go, it would seem the more locking up you would like to do. Which is weird, because they're meant to be that's, the Liberals, on, aren't they? But they, they would say, yes, imagine. but it's our job to keep society safe. So there must be ways to keep society safe, and I would agree with you. I would say, I don't want to see any more lockdowns. No. I, I, if it's the law, I'll do it, but I don't want it, no. and I don't think it's the right answer. And uh, you, the, the thing is, do we need to, with this variant, all the evidence coming out of South Africa, does say that it is 30% less lethal, less likely to see you here's in some, hospital. Here's some good news for you. 
Britain's Omicron wave may be no worse than a flu pandemic, according to an expert. Uh, as the first major study into the new variant suggests, it's less severe than the Delta. This is the first real-world study coming, as you say, out of South Africa. So if that's the case, how quickly should the government then take advice to say, right, we're moving back from this, to, to move away they, from the restrictions? Well, it's very in? simple. South Africa is around three weeks ahead of us, OK? That's when it was first discovered, when the Omicron yeah. variant was first discovered in SA, was around three weeks before we discovered the first case here. Now, South Africans, by and large, and I speak as someone who, by the way, who half my family are over there at the moment, are pretty much carrying on as they did with the Delta variant. Yeah. They carry on wearing face masks, they go out, they're not necessarily under the same kind of restrictions that we've had imposed here. And in fact, I'd go as far as to say they actually think we're bonkers in they the do. UK they for do. the okay, reaction so, we've so had. So they so think we're bonkers. Three weeks yeah. ahead. You, we should you look don't want that. to see any of this. No, no, so, three weeks ahead. We should look at that and we should say to ourselves, OK, well, this is what it's going to be like for us in three weeks' time. Let's drop those now. OK, yeah. very good. Now, let's pick through some of the response to this and some of the reason, I think, why you've been, shall we say, so sceptic on some of the uh, noise coming out of number 10 is that you would like them to lead by example. What are they saying latest out of the Downing Street quiz activity that <laughs> happened, OK, last year? Yes, it was. But, uh, but uh, how many parties were they having at number 10, by the way? I don't know. I don't know. know. Like I they never stopped. Yeah. Yeah. One Dawn, of them. Dawn, but, I mean... they need the Tupperware. Right, OK. That's why. And, Makes sense. And, but, I mean, it's like, you know, this is the latest one where we had our, um, the Conservative, our, um, what's his name, the mayor, former Mayor of London Sean candidate. Bailey. Sean, Sean Bailey. Sean Bailey, thank you very much. Pictures at a party with nibbles, with wine, no social distancing, no masks, having a party, mm. while people's families were... Yeah. In t uh, mental and that's health issues. People, are so people angry, were separated from the loved ones. Angry. Exactly, we're angry. I'm very angry. But this isn't. If this was the first time that the government had led, hadn't led by example, Definitely. then we might be <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the <laughs> thing is that there are time after time after time where they've not led by example. They've said, but "You must do this. We're going to do this." Can, yeah, we, can we start Jay, with Jay. the chief? Uh, uh, just got to get a new first thing in. Yes, the bloke who was responsible for almost single-handedly terrorising this country with his ludicrous modelling breaking every single rule himself by getting his mistress over for a leg over. But then we also had Dominic Cummings. Uh, Cummings and Goings. At Barnard Castle. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then we also had some <laughs> royal can I just say well, that, that has saved me test, a fortune enough. in eye tests. I just drive to Barnard yeah, Castle yeah. and it's amazing. All the time. That's all the what time. I do. Save and, and me then, so much And money. then we could always get started on that. But what I also call. don't understand, though, is that when they're caught out, it takes them weeks to admit that they broke the rules. I know. Even though well, they tried to get out of it. Damage, it's just they're like, in no rush, rush, you can they're in no rush. Look, I think we've got to, again, wheel it back a little bit. Obviously, politicians for centuries have not led by... They lie. They, they lie through their teeth because they're politicians. Okay. Of, every they do. of every persuasion. But, James, here's the thing. This has been, like, the biggest thing for the country since World War II. Sometimes some of the measures that they've suggested could be sensible if the threat was as real as it is. But the concern yeah. that we all have is that they it's have put in changes to laws that are very, very this undermining is... to our freedoms of this nation and what we stand for. And, and, and not just that, but this is like a knee-jerk panic reaction. There's absolutely no exactly. need for it to cover their own backsides. That's it. Because they messed up they were Because they messed up they were slow before. Because they're trying to make up for, in inverted commas, what the response was to the last massive wave, okay. which, of course, was sort of like the second or third variant, whatever it was. But and now they're saying, OK, well, at least this time, we took precautions. Right. But we scientists, well. we scientists well. can't look into the future. Neither can we. Is Boris Johnson still Prime Minister this time next year? I yes. bloody hope not. Bloody hope not. I'm going to say I think, I suspect not. Right, oh, Dawn, yeah, we move on. <laughs> so, JK Rowling. <gasps> no, uh, is she still in existence? Not playing, not playing, no. OK, Terry Gilliam, is yes. this still in existence? <laughs> Cancel culture. We've got to the stage now. It would appear that you can be cancelled for making a suggestion. Not making a statement, making a suggestion. So what's the suggestion? The suggestion is, he, th he said, people should watch Dave Chappelle's show, uh, The Closer. Which I watched to educate myself. Did it make me laugh? Did no. Well, did, did, I th no. did I think it was clever? Very clever. Did I think it was funny? No, it wasn't funny at all. But he's, you know, he's, he's, he's worth hundreds of millions of dollars, so what the hell do I know? I'm obviously wrong and he's right. Terry Gilliam said, no, I think that we, you know, you should, you should watch it. 
And then he said, I never thought that freedom of recommendation would be under threat. This is all about that they accuse. I use the word accuse Dave Chappelle, who's a huge star in the States, uh, of transphobia about making various gags and saying, God forbid, gender is a fact. And, 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 oh, that's, and that comes back to... Can, oh, can I talk now? JK. Thank you. Well, you, well, we JK you almost cancelled yourself. Just, just going to finish why it's affected him. So bosses at the old Vic Theatre later axed Gilliam's production of an eagerly awaited musical, Into the Woods. And that was because he'd made the suggestion Correct. of somebody Correct. who happens not to share the values and the views of some of the work brigade and this who were there. Is, this but then is, this, is, this seems to be what's happening with uh, J.K. Rowling. This is J.K. Rowling, who's been cancelled more times this year than Christmas. Um, basically, there's a new trailer out for her film, Fantastic Beats. Beasts, even, sorry. I'm even. hoping that they're going to make an episode the... of that called Fantastic Beats and Where to Eat Them Anyway. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic Beasts, the secret of Dumbledore. And they've put the trailer out. It doesn't even mention her name. She I just find it so What I mean, has she, she got to she, do? She she created it Nothing. and she wrote she created, it. She, Nothing. She made the ungrateful little wretches, Emma Watson and Daniel Radcliffe, oh. incredibly famous, incredibly rich. And Rupert Grant. But, the, yeah, but the, the, the issue is, Rupert at Grant. the same time as this trailer has come out, the Scottish police force have a, a declared, basically, that if a rapist identifies as female then that's fine, they are female, even though they've just raped someone with a penis. And J.K. Rowling was quite simply saying, no, they're a man. Again, I, th to me, someone raping you with a penis, uh, they're not a woman, are they? Because that's going down on the crime well, stats now. But, this is, but hang on a second. Oh, but this issue, you. though, is very real. That what we've got is we've got a lot of people who are either they're trying to make sense of something and to have a conversation about it, or alternatively, they're talking about something from their perspective. And, and then you have a, a group of individuals who seem to think that it's okay to cancel somebody because their views are at variance to yours. When are we going to move back to free speech where you can have a view, you can yeah. have a disagreement, the and then you can move on and respect the James, fact that you, James, you have the free view. speech only works one way. Way. Yeah, well, free, it's coming free, from me. The free, the free, I'm just grabbing the opportunity. I'm grabbing some air. The, the free speech comes from one direction, but if you don't agree with it, you, you can't say anything. One direction, but, split up. What? Ooh. Don't break that to me, Santa. No. Oh. Next, I'll be telling you, Santa might. Meanwhile, not be... no, 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 don't no, push no. it. No. Meanwhile, don't push it. Hello. Don't push it. On the Woke Rama, oh, yes. it turns out oh, that the statue that was uh, dropped uh, over in Bristol <laughs> happened because the police weren't necessarily paying attention. Yeah, so the headline here in the Daily Mail reads, police told to stand by as Colston's statue torn down and police took a, quote, a non-visible approach as hysterical demonstrators pulled down a statue of slave trader Edward Colston. And this is what's been heard in court. And you just think, well, it's, the police sort of must have realised what was happening. We could see it all unfold sort of as it was being recorded. And yet they just sort of surprise, stand by. Sometimes I think that the police are either a little too woke themselves, frankly, with some of the things that they've come up with, racist, and absolutely terrified is, yeah. of being accused of being racist. Which so between makes... those two things, I, I sort of don't really blame the police in some weird however, way. For not however, however, you try being a football fan. Going to, I mean, like a, you know, like a local derby. You understand these terminologies. I've been yes, a huge football fan. Football. Um, so it's like, you know, say West Ham playing. I don't know Spurs, for example. I'm plucking that. Oh, out, I think you know, or even derby. Chelsea. But I mean, <laughs> the police there just don't stand by and watch you. They treat you like you're a piece of filth. And I'm not honest. I'm quite nice. Um, and so why, why does it? Why do they stand by and watch blatant vandalism? And yet, if I dare, and because try I think walk they the genuinely way, don't know what to do. They don't know how to police it. They don't know what to do. They don't know what the rules are. But they don't understand the why law. they had accusations. But they also don't. But they understand. were breaking the law. I yes, they were. The I mean, I think, I, as far as I'm concerned, the arrest and stop them. The law is the law is universal. It doesn't say. Oh, yeah, that's OK for you, and oh, that's not no, so no, great it's, for it's, you. The, the law it, it does facts, it, it doesn't yeah, do but, feelings. But, but the problem is that, first of all, law is open to interpretation, and secondly, uh, we've now got people who really don't understand the law. No. And, they, and they're certainly not interested they're in... Called judges. Yeah, but how on earth do we have a situation <laughs> where the law enforcers don't understand law? That's a bit disturbing. Yes, it is, which is why there are many people up and down the country who simply do not have confidence in the police, service force, whatever you want to call and them. And you know as well as I do that nature abhors a vacuum. And one thing I've been banging on about for about... Is that the 18... problem with his head? It's one of the yeah. things. That is one of the problems there. It's just like a void. Um, is that if you don't have a police force, you will have people who would take the law into their own hands. That's the last and thing And that's pretty have. much what they did. He's called Boris Johnson, I think. <laughs> I th well, no, he just has a different <laughs> recollection of the truth than everybody else. Now, uh, let's talk about this, oh, because on the face of Megan. it... 
it, there seems to be a story here. <laughs> oh. uh, charities feel the pinch as wealthiest Britons tighten the purse strings. And you might think, what a peculiar article to pick. Why are you going to the Guardian for that? Mm -hmm. Britain's highest earners have been donating less to charity despite soaring incomes, according to an analysis of tax records. And they talk about the various amounts of money. And we're not talking about a few quid here and there. We are talking about the mega wealthy. And we're talking about the fact that 20% is the cut in real terms as to what they've given to charities in the past year. The issue that you've got, though, is that they start saying, well, yes, they've decided to spend the money. They've got more money coming into their coffers and they've decided to spend it on cars and boats and trains and planes and automobiles and all that stuff rather than give it to charity, as opposed to looking to the real reason, which, well done, The Guardian, because this is you. This is your fault. This is people said, well like done, you. Guardian. Easy, no. Easy. Ah. And the reason that it's people like The Guardian's God. fault is because they have demonised people with a lot of money. So instead Guardian? of encouraging people who have, whether it's done well, got huge wealth, to donate, to do things for society, to, mm. uh, to be philanthropic, as soon as they do, they start investigating them. They start looking at their tax records. They start putting them on the front page of their papers. They start doing all sorts of things to them. But and wait, so they're the not Guardian surprising. They're not going to raise their hands. They're not going to do it. They're not going to put their hands in their pocket because they don't want to draw attention to themselves. No, because... So funny enough, they take the money and put it out. Don't, don't The Guardian have some wealthy backers as well? Yeah, of course they do. Yeah, They've got a massive, yeah. great big trust fund that I supports see. their activities. Yeah, and yeah. the executives of The Guardian are paid a fortune. They are well. paid a fortune. God only knows how or why. If the rich increase their donations to 1% of their income, charities could get an extra £1.4 billion. Pounds. Yes, they could do, but if we stop vilifying, in the state, if you give money, you get gong. Suddenly we're saying to people, oh, you give money, oh, you got a gong. Yeah, because you did some good. Yeah. But I you... mean, why Why have we suddenly decided that people who give... You know, in the past, you go back and you, you look at uh, concert halls and you look at libraries and you look at all sorts of things that Haven't were we given and done by the Victorians. And then we'd start to say, oh, yeah, but look where they got oh. their money from. Well, hang, on. Uh, hang on. So let's link it back to, to Phil's story. Yeah. Because we've played at the Colston Hall in Bristol. Yeah. Yes. We've, we've, we've That's told the them, Colston we've, Hall. We've They've told them the statues and, and, and music venues down. And this is why people are not giving so much and they don't see the connection. Guardian, you're stupid. You need to learn. I'm sorry, I'm ripping up. I'm ripping up the garden and that page in the garden because they're stupid that they don't realise the connection between the gutter journalism that they just vilify people and then they wonder no. why they're not happy to and, give their uh, money. And of course, it's a season of goodwill and we should all be thinking of those less fortunate than ourselves. Well, we certainly should. How much have I you don't given think to charity? It's been... Oh, I did a um, I did a, um, so a bike rude. ride. For... No, 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 no. I did a bike ride. Oh, no, I did a bike ride for the Bobby Moore Fund and I gave some money to them. And I didn't even ask for sponsorship. I just gave them money. Meanwhile, another thing I just want to say. Oh, yeah. Another thing is they've politicised, yet again, charities. I used to be Chief Barker of, of Variety, the children's charity, for, for many, you know, and, and was a trustee for over 20 years, right? But they keep politicising everything. And, and, but and charities have become a political football. And they should And the organisation that governs them they has also not become be. highly political. And if you have a look at many of the charities up and down the country, when mm. they start to... They bring in certain things into their... I mean, look at the National Trust, for example. Precisely. And, and if you politicise charities in that way, in the same way that we've polluted our education system, you're going to end up with woke-tastic decisions and behaviour. And those of means are not going to get involved. They're not going to donate, they're not going to get involved. We need to celebrate those who do well, make money, and then put back into society. And well until done, well we done do, James. Yeah, round yes. of applause for James. Yes, yes I think so. That was a round of for James Banks, wasn't it? Well, not really. So, uh, let's turn our attention back to uh, different points. Of course, the papers, they're absolutely stacked full of COVID, 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 COVID. And then suddenly, you have a story, double page in the Daily Mail, where they just decided that Kate has gone out and bought two outfits, mm. which are different colours, but they're the same cut. Is this news? No. Nope. Well, right. It's, it's on the woman, basis that it's not it's news. That is for nice. those. But it's not new. So it's a double page spread in the Daily Mail. Complete waste of time. I'm ripping it up now because it's pointless. Dawn, let's talk about schools. Right. Uh, okay. I know we're coming to the end of the Christmas term, but there is still a threat hanging over them, isn't there? There is, and and the um, teaching unions, who obviously care a lot about our children, are quite keen for schools to remain closed. Should the latest COVID outbreak get any worse. But now, why are the people who are least likely to be long-term affected by something, that they might have a cold, they might have flu, by all means, if you get it, then stay away. Now, but if you don't get it, then why are we not learning the lesson that you are interrupting? You've talked about mental health. Mm, We've talked yeah. about the interruption now, of their education. Yeah. This is serious. Now, it's nearly 250,000 pupils are being kept away from school as it is. We know there are... Um, uh, 10,000 vulnerable children who have just fallen off the radar. 
Now, closing schools not only affects education, obviously, especially for the poorer kids who are never, ever going to make up the lost opportunities by missing this education. However, on a very, very serious note, um, closing schools means that more children will probably suffer at the hands of abusers at home. And we are obviously little Arthur, who was murdered by his evil, hideous stepmom, and the latest little girl, um, Star Hobson, who was murdered by her mother's girlfriend. Um, now, lockdown is a lot to do with both these cases because in Arthur's case, the school would have put up on the fact that that child was abused but, and social work is yeah, in but Star's case. That's a very specific story in a very specific case. The wider damage to society, yes. schools shutting, is very serious. It's huge. I mean, the, the, the kids will... I mean, it's certainly the poorer kids, it's estimated that they will lose seven years of achievement potential in their lives because of the education they have been forced into losing yeah. by this government. It's but might I well. suggest as well that no one has actually sort of brought up the subject of what it does to the economy as well. You've got to think along the lines of that if parents are not able to go to work for whatever reason, yeah, quite. there will be a knock-on effect yeah. from that as well. Yeah, huge With the greatest effect. amount of respect, the school children don't care too much. They're probably having a whale of a time. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're no. Actually, you're wrong. No. They're, they're bored stupid. They can't yeah. wait to go back. Yeah. I know that sounds counterintuitive, Phil, but it's true. They loathe being and, and plus, you know, For a week, it's amusing, and then... Then it drags on. They and want to get back got, to see their mates. Sorry, School is obviously you've, considerably more fun than when I was there. Then, If you've got a lovely middle-class home and a lovely middle-class existence, it's absolutely fine. If you are living in cramped accommodation mm. with four or five siblings, with no access to free Wi-Fi, no laptops each, then, then that is hell on earth. These children need to be at school. They, they need to be at school, they need to be educated. Mm. And we need to, I mean, surely we need to learn lessons, if you like. And I know it's a horrible phrase. See what you learn did, the lessons. See what you did. Do it but afterwards. also, what's so the knock on effect? What will happen in years to come when those children are the ones who are ultimately running the country, one way or another? You need to think along those lines as oh, well. I think well, they will have caught up by then. Because that's a dreadful thing that's going to be like by the time it gets to that point. Wow. And this is another story in the papers at the moment about the BBC. I mean, they've, um, they've um, had a Lord's inquiry into the youngsters at the BBC, and the BBC are going, yeah, well, they don't actually cope with debate that well, and we're a bit concerned about they don't have a, a broader spectrum of how the world works because they're just so focused on their own little narrow, woke worlds, and Precisely. any difference of opinion offends them. Well, it does, rather. And, and, and then... It's funny because wokery offends me. Well, you, but you're allowed to say that, Sim. We're not offended by that because no, we're, we're all grown that, ups and we can do debates, yes. not hate. That's the thing. But that's I the do thing. like that phrase. But is it because we're all of a certain age that we're not upset by wokery? But of course, they've all been taught it and it's entrenched. Uh, Might I suggest not all of us are of a certain age, but yes. Hit a sore spot some to of us my are left. Let me order. <clears throat> <coughs> Meanwhile, but some of us don't look it, obviously. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. no, no. Meanwhile, in uh, many of the papers tucked us. away, apparently there's uh, a very significant uh, part of the um, uh, ice shelf which is going to melt and then it's all going to sort of fall off. It could, could. Global warming. Again. Oh, global, global warming. warming Hello, Greta. Again. Um, and then uh, if it happens, it might not happen for uh, a number of centuries, but then we could see sea levels oh. rise uh, significantly. Well, well, well Pingu will still be around. Yeah, Pimmy now. It'll be all right. Yeah. If Pingo oh, well, in right in, then in that case, <laughs> if the ice cap's going to melt, eat, eaten and penguin. Yeah. <laughs> Should we be concerned about this? No. Oh, no. no. UN, no. UN, UN alarmed over record Arctic high of 38 degrees. Here's the a UN wacky is idea. Sounding alarm bells over climate change. <clears throat> Here's a wacky idea for the UN. Why don't they worry a little more about what's happening in the world today rather than what might happen in 200 it's, years? It's time. my if, maybe, possibly. It's a strange thought. Here's, here. here's some modelling we've come up with. That could be off. And, and the oh. UN, who may or may not be slightly in bed with China, need to be slightly more concerned about what China are getting up to no, with their new well, coal-powered fire station. Like and and, that. Uh, and, and a, altering the weather. But talking about um, the environment, and just sure. before I rip it up, uh, because um, I, I, I'm amazed that so much good stuff has come from today's Guardian newspaper. So am I. Are you, Hyde are you Park, Ill? I think I might be. Hyde Park could be redesigned and lost species, including beavers, reintroduced to Beaver. London under ambitious and rewilding plans. Right. This is the city's mayor, Sadiq Khan. Why is he worrying oh. about this kind of nonsense? Because he's taken down every advert that he didn't like. That's his legacy. I mean, this guy seems to have absolutely no clue. He's slowed down the traffic. 
he hasn't encouraged people to go and get their jabs and, and do what they need to do in this uh, capital city. He hasn't helped businesses get back to work and he's worried about rewilding and sticking beavers in eye Park. He, he, Hang on a second. He, he, Is it really? And I very scarcely would you hear me offering the point of view that would defend Sadiq Khan. Oh, my God. But what the Is heck? it his responsibility to get Londoners to be jabbed? Exactly the same way as Andy Burnham's responsibility to get Mancunians jabbed? I'm not sure. Well, he could I have think, said I something. think it's slightly more concerned than about beavers, to be I honest. I think it is his responsibility to make sure that Londoners get the message. Considering we have a very poor record of it, but I mean, is And the... going back to those stats, if we have the lowest vaccination mm. rate in the country, mm. yeah. then it does come down to politicians of all hues, all colours, to encourage people to do the right thing. So, yes, I do think it's part of his job. Meanwhile, he's released £600,000 to assist this project. And it's like, where's the money coming from? It's just like, unbelievable. And You've got TfL, TfL is running bankrupt. out of money. TfL and this cretin... Bankrupt. This and he's cretin... No it's like, what is wrong with you? Hold on, he's bankrupt public transport in London, so we've got to cancel night tubes. And possibly so, a whole lot. That's the latest thing. Yeah, and, and in danger, certainly women trying to get home Precisely. late from work or parties or if they're allowed out to work. Um, and, and, and he's worried about, he's giving money to beavers. Here's my question for you. If you've got the sole monopoly... That's a, that's a really oh. boring game of Christmas. Yeah. I love if how you've got mono I if love you Monopoly. Monopoly. Moving on, Twister Gang. If you've got the monopoly yes. on the public on the transport system. I bet he's the how dog. Do you, how do you go? Mayfair or Park Lane? I'm the boot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm the top hat. I bet you are. What what, what are you, Russ? At the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. What were you how, then? how do you go bust if you're the only you're the only poker game in town? This is seriously what I don't understand. But, but this is what I find absolutely astonishing, and it just shows a total mismanagement. And and this is where we've got no competition. We, we have no leadership. So we talk about the void in in our leadership. We say, well, what's the alternative to Boris and his lying and his and his but, nonsense and his ridiculous but, leadership? And then you see what's happening elsewhere, and you think, hang on a second, we are governed by cretins. Right. We're governed by people who do not understand the difference between right and wrong. They don't understand the difference between governance and governing. And they don't understand the difference between policy and implementation and importance and focus. That's a lot of long words. Wow. Christmas, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I just had a rant. Someone Shall got, we lighten someone the got mood given a thesaurus with... for yes. Christmas. <laughs> <clears throat> Shall we lighten the mood <laughs> with obvious. some... Shall we describe it as festive or Christmas news? <sighs> Yeah, that was it's full of Scrooge mode now, yeah, isn't it? Everybody loves a bit of... That was quite mode. scary if that However, to be uplifting. It's a bit frightening. It is. I However, didn't have to press a button when you said that. Stuff your turkey. Pardon? Stuff what? your turkey. Oh, That's right. the headline. Oh, yeah. mm. Good news for turkeys. Uh, <laughs> you are off the menu right, for 58% yeah. of young adults, according to a poll. In a study of 18 to 30-year-olds, 21%, oh. they would prefer what to turkey? Pizza. Correct. Thank you very much. Unbelievable. I'm going for the speedboat. Oh, oh, actually, do you know what? I oh. quite like the idea of having pizza on Christmas. What? Food. That sounds I don't quite have nice. I don't Unbelievable. Can't bear it. What was the festive food of choice uh, from uh, elsewhere in the world? Chinese meal. Correct. 17%. Curry was favourite with 16%. 13% planned a meat free feast. Of course, he's cheating. Of course, he's cheating. Of course, he's cheating. I'm researched. I was really I've researched it. He's cheating. It's called research. Anyway, that having done that story means that once again, uh, for those who are listening, I'm just going to rip up the Daily Mirror. Wow. Because it's boring so, and full of rubbish. He's so is he just strong. Is he showing so off to you that he's like built up muscles and it's anyway. like. You know, trying to uh, impress I, you. He puts it down to the dietitian, but actually it's because he's been tearing up so many tearing newspapers. papers. Like Would you like to do some baubles? I can, I, can do, I can do Christmas songs or baubles. Would you like me to play with your baubles? Uh, no, I'm going like to give you a treat. Steady. Because the baubles um, a story that you want to talk about does appear to be in every newspaper, which means that the PR people have been very effective. It's very good. Yours, uh, come yours come comes come. from the uh, Daily Mail. It's in all the papers. But it's in the mail. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it's got a double page spread in. The Guardian! Oh, my God, that's a bit excessive. Oh, Anyway, yeah, tell us really about the story. This is like love... the nightmare before Christmas, the yeah, tell me, you're yeah. referring to the this is, this is a lovely lady called Sylvia Listen, Pope. It's the time for forgiveness. Se... I'm listening to you, Dawn. For Thank putting you. together a Thank shockingly you. terrible paper. Shut up. Just carry Any on, case, Dawn. This is a lovely lady called Sylvia Pope. She's 78. She lives in Swansea. She's a grandmother. She's now known as Nana Baubles. 
She collects Christmas baubles and she has got 1,760 baubles to hang from her ceiling. Bless her. I'll not get a tree. Grace. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And she starts in September and then leaves them up until March because it takes so long to well, play with yeah. all her baubles. Right. It is amazing. Colourful. She says that she's going to go for over two thousand baubles. Yeah. But anyway, uh, having done that story, it's but she's not got it. No, hang on, she's run out of ceiling. That, I can tell no, that. she's run out of ceiling. She because she's not going to be able to fit two thousand baubles there's, up there. There's one thing that we didn't mention about this lady. What? Absolutely bonkers. Uh, I wonder if she's single. <laughs> I doubt it. No. Um, no. Would you like she's to? She's married uh, to her baubles. Are you? A, you're. You're a dog owner. I am a dog owner. You're a dog owner. I'm a do you're a dog owner. I'm a dog owner. You a dog owner. No. Uh, uh, so you do the dog story. I'll do the dog story Wait, then. <laughs> I oh, then that's gonna, I'm going to run out then. Any case, right. Everyone has a favourite Christmas song. Do you have a favourite song, Philip? Chris Rea, Driving Home for Christmas. Oh, God. I love that song. God, I hate that song. What? I'm, I'm not I hate a fan. that song. I'm not a fan of that. Oh, I, I, I hate Christmas love songs. It. Period. I, I, in any case, um, I, I, all I want for Christmas is you, Mariah Carey. I had to sing that live on TV last year, and I really, 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 really can't sing at all. Neither can she. Oh, so what is that? Oh, she's um, everyone has a favourite Christmas song, Christmas. whether it be a classic, a Michael Bublé, or indeed a simple carol. Now it turns uh -huh. out the dogs have their preference to. All of the favourite songs and Last Christmas by Wang. Uh, it's Wang. Wang. A well known band. <laughs> Sorry, Wang. Wham apparently is the favourite. But, but look, uh, with that bomb to a show very different news, version. Yeah, the Wang. We, we yeah. Yeah. Does, it, does it tell you what cats like though? What we're nobody cats cares like? about cats. We're going back to the ball. Anyway, again. so I, I thank you what, very much indeed, all of you, like? for joining me. Uh, yes, Phil, Dave. Uh, Wait, hang on, you didn't tell what the dog's favourite song was. I did, I said Wham. Last Christmas. Oh, you Oh, Why? unbelievable. So, uh, Phil Dave, uh, presenter of Clashes of the Week, to broadcaster and also Russ, Russ Kane, and also to columnist and broadcaster Dawn Neeson. Thank you all very much indeed. Only time for me to say we're going to leave you with a few of the clips of the favourite bits of the series from Between the Sheets. Meanwhile, it's time for all of us to say a very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. Sainsbury's have said that Brits might be looking forward to celebrating bonfire night, but they have once again banned the sale of fireworks from all of its stores because, oh, apparently pets don't like them. No! Who doesn't, doesn't like a big bang at this time of year? You love a bang at any I time do like of year. like a big bang at any time of year. <laughs> now, this is Sainsbury's, obviously, for um, to look after your pet pooches and your pet pussies um, because they get a bit scared. So they are banning the sales of fireworks, which means nobody else can have any fun ever. But does it mean that they... I mean, this is this is a supermarket starting to make a stand. I wish they'd make other stands, like, for example, let's clear up on the waste and stop putting mm. so much plastic packaging mm. all over your stuff that oh, you God, sell us. Yeah. Mm. Let's stop doing bog-offs where you end up buying so much stuff that you waste it. Yeah. Let's stop charging for plastic bags when you're still polluting the environment with everything else you do. All of that stuff, and yet they're telling us what to do. Does it mean that we just go, you know what? Ooh, Sainsbury's. Well, I mean, the thing is, they're in conjunction with, Strap uh, with um, Sadiq Khan, aren't they? And I'm actually going to buy the biggest rocket and strap Sadiq Khan to it because he's actually banned fireworks at New Year's Eve as well. Well, he said that last year. I don't know if he's actually banned the fireworks. It might just be the gathering because last year he decided mm. to spend tons of money no, 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 on the yeah, fireworks and yeah. do a big BLM fist and the rainbow yeah. flag. That, that it's going right. to happen again, 100%. Yeah. We're just not allowed to stand there and watch it because no, we're no, the police. No. That was over the dome, was it? It all went yeah. very woke yeah. and politically correct. Now, the thing is, obviously, it's very important to look after your pussies and your pooches. So, you, but you can train animals. If you get them used to loud noises and everything, you can train them and you look after them and make sure they're safe. I, I have two dogs who I do keep indoors on fireworks night, but that, I'm, to be honest, they, don't, they could care less. They really. Don't but mind. some it's dogs are dog. okay. Yeah. Well, I thought it's my responsibility to look after my dog. Yes. And I don't. Well, see I'm glad. How... That, I'm glad that you don't. Know. <laughs> Where is it now? I do. He's looking it's after it out. out the street. I, I think it's. I think it's in the garden somewhere doing okay. something. Nature's looking after my dog right now. But you know what? <laughs> okay. I don't see how. I don't see how Sainsbury's banning fireworks is really going to make a difference here. Yeah. Are they just making a stand? Because if you, for example, I mean, let's just bring in the other topic, which is in all the papers today. Oh, good! Because as soon as Bonfire Night is said and done, it's Christmas! Yay! Christmas news! Oh, excellent. And then all the Christmas adverts are out. It is a woke-tastic festival. It's yeah. dreaming of a woke Christmas this year, isn't it? Oh, it's based on the worst wokerism. Uh, but I think possibly... Well, everyone's saying John Lewis, OK? The John Lewis one, which is a complete rip of the VT. Which it's is, quite boring. It's boring. Oh, it's awful. I and it didn't bring Daniel, out. I want to... oh, no, Elliot snogging uh, ET at didn't the end of the. Snog. It was, there's a peck. There's some a peck. Yeah. On the cheek. Well, personally, if I was is a kid. Is that your version of snogging? Well, no, no. not your girlfriend. <laughs>
Blimey. <laughs> You're not well, he does have a beard, so. Um, <laughs> not I haven't yet. complained so far. Uh, but I, if I, look, even if I was a kid that age, even I'd be worried about like some alien pathogen. Maybe I'm just pathological germaphobe, but I wouldn't be giving an alien a peck in case, you know, we go COVID. Well, COVID, well, I think it's COVID, 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 COVID. They scared COVID. you as well. Yeah. Yeah. well COVID. They scared you against the COVID. Well, Don't hug your granny. Okay, well, not so quite that bad. I think, I think there might be a germ from Mars that might be a tiny bit worse than one out of China. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's just boring wow. to watch. Like compared to they've done so many good adverts in the past and that was just excruciating. They've, they've got sort Dull. of worse over the years. And yeah. I just think that this year it's almost as if they're like, oh, we've all been working from home, couldn't be bothered. Yeah. It's just a, it's, it's a boring advert it, look, I, I, where I, I, they spent a lot of money and frankly, it's not gonna make me go I to John Lewis and buy anything. They're what? financially suffering as well, so maybe that's the reason why. Well it's because they're being run by somebody who who is a, a great business person, I'm sure, but she's she's not a retailer. There is no, no. spark and bang and yeah. excitement. And, and, and mystery and, and thought-provoking message. Uh -huh. It's just like, oh, so, oh, couldn't be bothered. Did uh -huh, they spend absolutely. a lot of money though? Because the makeup on the alien looked particularly poor. It looked a bit like a school play where they just spray them down with a bit of silver spray paint, mm. stick a funnel on their egg and go, go on, out from mm. Planet X. But, but there's it now, like millions of the on, on But records. now, in this day and age, do we need to be concerned that the child was not wearing a mask on the bus? Those are them rules oh, by oh, that no. Sadiq Khan. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's not true. wearing a Very mask, naughty. You know, you know, the most offensive thing about it is the theme tune. They've completely ruined a real classic, haven't they? George M. Moroder and Phil Oakey from the 1990s, was it? Oh, that was before Ryan Mark was born. Yeah, 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 before these were born. <laughs> but I mean, they've done it with the Beatles, haven't they? And they've, they've just turned this classic. Yeah, they've, they've uh, ruined that. Electric, together in the Electric Dream, great classic. And they turned mm. it into this whispery, vomit-inducing drivel oh. that has no... That's what they did with, uh, what was it, Lily... What's her name? Lily Allen. Lily Allen. Lily Allen. Oh and she butchered the Keen song. Yeah. I like that one. I like that advert. That was a good one. But why not? And, and, and they, introduced, not. they introduced this alien to this Christmas that just never exists anymore, does it? Why not show the alien a real British Christmas? You know, dad off his head on the sofa, mum sobbing over a gin in the kitchen, the kids glued to their phones. Mrs. Brown's boys on telly. Yeah. Why? You know, Doctor, yes, Doctor, I'm getting off here. Nobody straight watching away. Doctor Who yeah. anymore. No, it's no, gone rubbish. No, no. Oh, Even the alien. Go, what the hell? Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that this is just an offensive stereotype. No. Everything has gone <laughs> no. wrong with Christmas. We we keep saying that you know save this and save that to protect Christmas. Save. Something like a proper story or something fun. Yeah. Well, all the fun has been sucked out. Funnily that, do you want me to rain in your parade a little bit? Oh, um, go on. I, have, I, have a, I know a person who works in organising the events for MPs. Oh. And they got an email today, and I don't know if this is public knowledge properly yet, but they've cancelled their Christmas party in a lot of the parliamentary events. Oh. oh, yeah. Oh, just in case they all get COVID. Just in case. Well, mm, well, what are they going to? What are they going to plan to not do the events for? Because they just oh. had an MP introduce saying, "Oh, we can't close down the schools if there's another emergency lockdown." Just hypothetically. Oh. Well, Keir Starmer can't get COVID anymore. He's had it more times. And God was God knows he's, how many people. He's had a very unlucky been, time with the old COVID. He's been in isolation a for like a year. I mean, that's, that's, been trying, that's a good thing for all of us, to be fair. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it sounds like he's had it so many times, a nuclear winter wouldn't kill him off. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a he's cockroach. Pot cockroach. <laughs> he's a cockroach, <laughs> isn't he? <laughs> I just want to I just want to give a little shout out to the Marks of Sparks Christmas advert, which is really? the big rival. And that's got Dawn French, we're quite liking it. Um, I like Dawn French, I'm yeah. not sure I like it. And Spider-Man mm -hmm. um, actor Tom Halland, who is Holland even, is voicing Percy Pig. Right. Um, I, I mean, I, I like him. My Percy Pig wouldn't oh, sound yeah, like that, to be honest him. with you. He's very... Don't, you don't like I've always been a massive comic book fan, and he is not even close to Spider-Man no. whatsoever. And it's not oh, even Percy Pig. Sake. But it's quite He's okay. funny. I mean, Dawn French does say, oh, baubles. Bit edgy. And Percy Pig runs around the um, Marks and Sparks supermarket in Westford and Stratford, East London, by the way, if anyone's interested. And But it runs down all the aisles, right, apart from the party food aisle, because party food's got pigs in blankets yeah. in it. And Percy Pig is a pig. Mm. And it's like... Right. Look at these. This is this is your Christmas. Yeah. yeah no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 you're dead. Yeah, they cut out the part where I'm chasing him around the aisles of the night before. Yeah. Percy gets eaten in the end. Spoiler. Uh, rampaging boy. That's the name of the advertising campaign. It's now been withdrawn by John Lewis. It was their latest home insurance TV advert. People were getting really uh, obsessed about the fact that the boy was dressing up in a dress and then he was running around. And then it's actually because the Advertising uh, Standards Authority have got involved and said, yeah, but the problem is, would you be able to claim if the child was just willfully damaging stuff? So it seems like a massive misjudgment from John Lewis, but we're talking about it. Great story, bad story, woke gone mad. Who's to blame? Woke gone mad, isn't it? I mean, it's like, it's like, I mean, some, can, can, mind you, compare some of their nauseating Christmas adverts. 
It's going to be, I think this year is going to be the year of the nauseating Christmas, Christmas advert, yeah. even more than usual. Mm. I mean, look, it's been withdrawn, though, because of the complaints, because let life happen. The problem was that they couldn't let life happen because you do that. You have a child who's just rampaging around with no parental supervision. Funnily enough, your insurance company is going to go, we're not uh -uh. paying. Null and void. So, it, but is it the fact that he was in a frock and high heels that already upset people as well? I don't think anybody cared about that. No, did they? Well, really. I, th I, th I think some people were wrongly upset by it, but I think what's says a man in a pussy mask. What, what's scary about this story <laughs> is that they think people are so stupid as to as to not realise that accidental damage might not be a part of what the insurance covers. They've had to write to every single person who took up John Lewis insurance since the advert was released to say, just by the way, if your kid does this, we might not pay out. <laughs> have John Lewis completely lost the pot? I mean, have they? Have they? forgotten how to run a business. Well, I think people are just getting too sensitive, to be honest. Like, no, like, no, really? <laughs> no, no, they're no, getting too sensitive. I, no. Like you said, um, no one watching the advert surely is going to think, actually, if my kid does rampage around my yard and smash the face up, I'm going to claim. No one really sat at home watching that thinks that that's the case. Surely. Yeah, but hang on a second. If you have damage in your home, that's why you get insurance, whether it's willful or otherwise, isn't it? Oh, I don't think so. Well, I, th no? I, th I, th I think the point is that some of the, the small print doesn't match with the description they provide in the thing. I mean, look, to be honest, I think the, you know, the scary thing here is the parents. Like, how bad are the parents that they're letting their kid be that badly behaved? Right. Well, have you seen some of the children who are out about <laughs> on our streets? Oh, yes. Oh. Some, some of them look even scarier than you. Let's turn our attention to our video of the week. Ooh, I like it's this It's been bit. the Tory party oh, you're not conference. Using that one. No, okay. Theresa Coffey. So she just announced that they're taking away, as Work and Pensions Minister, they're taking away the £20 a week uh, uplift that was given during the pandemic. Yeah, it was temporary. There's the point. And then she's singing, I've had the time of my life very, very badly, <laughs> out of tune, and dancing terribly. Oh, it's gone viral. make of it? Uh, yeah, I mean, politicians shouldn't dance or sing, should they? I mean, Boris, one of Boris's many jokes in his speech was about our um, John Bon Govi. <laughs> Gove was dancing yeah. in the nightclub, wasn't he? They're yeah. all just bad. But, uh, I mean, we've, we've all been saying that news has to be bad. Why? And, you know, she's got a bit of character. Yes. People often say politicians are out of tune with society. Oh. Oh. Why, why can't she have a, have a bit of fun in the evening? I mean, it's totally ridiculous that that's a news story. I d but it's, it's totally it's, it's ridiculous. It's the woke that, brigade. But they're doing How? Why? How? Because you're starving people. You're taking 20 quid away from them and it's not fair. And Making a song and dance about Having it. the time of their life. And they've just been having the time of their life, having probably had a whole bucket load of fizz as well. It's somebody else's expense. These politicians, they're all on the take, aren't they? They might pay but their own way. But they don't need to be. They're on eight grand a year, aren't they? Jab today, safer tomorrow is the slogan. A TV channel, they're in Brighton, they're called Latest TV. They are celebrating the COVID vaccine. Frankly, uh, it makes me almost want to take the vaccine out of my arm. It's Aww. so appalling. I mean, what do you make of this thing? Jab today, safer tomorrow. Jab today, safer tomorrow. Jab today, safer tomorrow. I mean, I think it's fantastic. What? what? Yeah, I love it. Good fun. You, you've got it on your jingle, haven't you, already? You've downloaded it, it you're playing it on your phone. I think that their song that they've written to persuade you to have the vaccine is good. Yeah, I do. You know, I'm going to have it... I, I, I'm waiting for the remix, right? You know, the the, the Calvin... Uh, they, I'm, I'm they, I mean, this, Calvin Harris. Harris. Yes. Yeah, yes, that's the yeah. one. You're so down with the yeah. kids. <laughs> but, the, the, but the whole group of celebrities have done this, haven't they? I mean, they didn't sort of... James Corden was involved in one in America where he's singing the and musical. dancing down a street, singing oh. about... Pricks, basically. It's absolutely awful. It's this. Will it's turn great. I'm going to have it off. on the tube. I'm going to play it out loud. Everyone will be dancing along, getting their jabs. It's yeah, great. Well, it's been nice I, knowing you. You'll get you'll get cancelled, Benjamin, if you're not careful. All, all those all those people of a certain age. You know, when you're waiting for your boosters, do you not want to? Do you not want this playing out while you no. you wait for your third shot? No, we don't. Yeah. Absolutely no need for that <laughs> at all. All I know is we're almost out of time. Dawn Neeson, Benjamin Butterworth, thank you very much indeed. We are going to leave you with Jab Today, Safer Tomorrow. Oh, my God. We'll see you next week. Enjoy. Jab Today, Safer Tomorrow.
we get it done.